Come on, it's time to get cleaned up. Right. You're pretty anxious to see that cousin Matthew of yours, aren't you? Oh, well, I haven't seen him for 17 years. You know, I understand that he's become a very wealthy man back east. Hey, Paul. You cousin Matt. Hey, here comes somebody now. You fellas now keep on your toes. These Easterners, they put a lot of stock in good manners. Sure to curtsy. Oh. Ben. Matthew. Oh, my goodness gracious. Ben, it's so good to see you. It's wonderful to see you, Matthew. Ben, Welcome. this is my ward, Elizabeth Drew. It's true. Welcome to the Ponderosa. <laughs> Matthew wrote that you were bringing your ward. I, I thought you meant a child. <laughs> oh, I hope I'm not too great a disappointment, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> Miss Drew, you're a delightful surprise. So this is the fabled Ponderosa. Well, it's a nice spot for a forest fire. You two, get my luggage. Uh, uh, Miss Drew, Matthew, uh, these are my sons. Hoss, little Joe. Pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Howdy. You mean these... These rustics are the heirs to the famous Ponderosa? Ben. This is my son. Matthew, how long do you think it'll take you to organize your new branch office in San Francisco? It'll take at least two months, I think. You've done very well, Matthew. You should be proud of your success. This will be our third branch, one in New York, one in New Orleans, and now San Francisco. And I make an occasional trip to Europe. It gave me my only chance to see Elizabeth while she was in school there. Oh, you went to school in Europe, huh? Yes, finishing school in France. What about you, Jamie? You go to school in France, too? Naturally. Every one of them. Then when we ran out of French schools, father started on the English ones. But they wouldn't have any part of me. So you see me ignorant and ungraduated. <laughs> Took my last tutor three months to recover his health. So father is currently enduring me himself. Why, this is a delicious dinner. One wouldn't expect to find such food in this wilderness. As a matter of fact, Jamie, we had this meal prepared specially in your father's honor. Back in the old days, he was quite a gourmet. That was a long time ago, Ben. After Mary died, I did. I was sorry to hear about that, Matthew. I... But in a way, you were fortunate as I was. Mary left you a son. <laughs> she did that all right. She died having me. Did you know that? This is a lovely place you have here, Mr. Cartwright. Don't be embarrassed, Mr. Cartwright. Just do as my father does. Pretend that I don't exist.
Jamie, your father... Don't talk to me about my father. Jamie. If it hadn't have been for you, he'd left me to rot in that prison they call a boarding school. He wouldn't. He really loves you. He doesn't care a thing about me. You're the only person in my life who ever cared whether I lived or died. Liz, you... You'll never stop caring about me, will you? You're my friend, you know. My only friend. I'll never stop caring, Jamie. You know I never will. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have you to count on. Sure, good thing the Indians around here are friendly. I spot you a mile off in that outfit. Very funny. You two would be even funnier riding to hounds. Hey, you know, he's got a point, huh? She looked pretty funny riding to hounds. <laughs> yeah, I reckon we would at that. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready to take me for that ride, Joe? Yes, indeed, ma'am. I uh, hope you don't mind that I asked Jamie to go along, but, uh, well, Matthew's taking a drive with Mr. Cartwright, and, well, I knew Jamie would rather ride with us. No, I don't mind at all. Besides, I don't think he'd be safe out alone in that coat. Hey, you can't ride, can't you? I can ride any spav and nag you can scare up out of that flimsy excuse for a stable. Sloppy clothes and a layer of dirt never made a better rider out of anyone. Before I'm through, I'll wear out every bag of bones you have. Shall we? Jamie, you weren't figuring on taking my horse without asking me, were you? Well, I'm sick of riding that swayback nag your brother foisted on me. Around here, it's pretty serious business taking a man's horse without asking him. Well, then call the sheriff. Let go of me. Jamie, you rode that horse till he's sweaty and all lined up. Now you're going to clean him. The only thing I'm cleaning is me. Jamie. Young man, if it's a bath you want, then it's a bath you'll get. But it'll be my way. Get your hands off of me, you big baboon! Stop it! All Stop right, it! Jamie, is my it a rub down for the horse or a bath for you? Just put that boy down! Stop it! Anything you say, Paul. Boss, what's going on? Nothing I can't handle. Nothing at all. I, uh, I got a horse to take care of, Paul. See you later. Matthew, I, I don't know what to say. Hoss has never played. done anything like Ben. Whatever happened, it was probably Jamie's fault. Now, if we don't know that, don't we? What is it between you and Jamie? I know it's none of my business and I should... Ben, really? There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing anyone can do about it. I'm afraid it's just too late for Jamie and me. And if you don't mind, Ben, I'd, I'd rather not talk about it. Of course.
honey all disappeared last night. No honey for breakfast. Oh, what would happen? Don't know. Hobson put lock on pantry. Oh, <clears throat> no more for me, Moran. I'm going to go riding. Well, if you'll wait until I change, Jamie, I'll go with you. I don't need a keeper, Elizabeth. Well, I oh, want no. to go with you. May I? Your wish is my command, mademoiselle. I shall await you in yon grim and dingy stable. My apologies, gentlemen. I'm ashamed to admit he's my son. Matthew, Jamie didn't mean any harm. He's just a boy. And no harm done, Elizabeth. If you'll all excuse me, Jamie will be waiting. Ben, I've changed my mind. I would like to talk to you about Jamie. Boys, uh, don't you have something you, you ought to do? Uh, yeah, Paul. Yeah, excuse us, we have some work to do. Ben, what am I gonna do with that boy? Matthew, I... I don't understand how you let it go this far. And Jamie's a, he's a bright boy. But uh, you two sure don't get along, do you? How come? Well, I'm afraid Jamie told you the crux of it the other night at dinner. When his mother died, God help me, I couldn't stand the sight of him, Ben. Oh, I saw to it he was well taken care of, but I stayed away from him. I buried myself in my work. By the time I came out of my fog, it was too late. He was a spoiled, tantrum-throwing, unbearable little... You couldn't get through to him, Ben. I quit trying. I guess I kept... Hoping that as he grew older, he'd... Huh. Huh. And yet you don't seem to be doing very much to discipline him. Afraid to let myself go with him. There's no telling what I might do if I ever got started, man. So I... I just ignore him. Well, that's certainly not a solution. Well, what is? With well, this business deal on my mind, I just... Ben, did you really mean it when you said that you wanted to help me? Of course, of course I meant it, but uh, what do you mean? I need time, Ben. I need time to get this deal out of the way, but more, I need time to think. Hmm. Ben, would you keep Jamie here while I go to San Francisco? place. Certainly be glad to see the last of it tomorrow. Uh, Jamie. Jamie, I've got a surprise for you. You're going to stay here with the Cartwrights while Elizabeth and I go to San Francisco. Oh, you, you must be joking. No, Jamie, I'm not joking. Here? But, Father, I... Jamie, I'm going to be very busy in San Francisco. I just think it would be... And you're going to toss me in somebody else's lap so you won't have to be bothered with me, is that it? Well, I'm not going to stay here, Father. Do you hear me? I won't stay! Where will you go, Jamie? Aren't you even going to tell us goodbye? Stay here, please. 
I can't, Jamie. I must go. Come on, Elizabeth. We'll miss the stage. Goodbye, Jamie. Jamie. Now, Matthew, you two have a good trip. And don't worry about Jamie. He'll be all right with us. Thank you, Ben. This means a great deal for me, Jack. Get up. Get up. Anything you going to start looking for him yet? Well, if he isn't back in an hour, I'll start looking for him. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Joe? Howdy, Ben. Joe? Ben, this boy tells me that you've been holding him out here against his will. Now, is there any truth in that? Yeah. Yeah, the boy's telling you the truth, all right. But I haven't been doing too good a job, I guess. And his daddy did leave him out here with you? Yeah. Might have known you'd own the whole town, even the sheriff. Ben, how long is he going to be out here with you? About two months, if I can keep my eye on him that long. Well, I don't envy you none. But just do me a favor, will you? Keep a tight rein on him? Thanks for bringing him out, Roy. Now, young fellow, you listen to me. I know what you think of us, and I know what you think about staying here, but you are here, and you will be for two months. So you might as well try to find some pleasure in it. You might start by putting that horse up in the barn. Now. Likeable kid. Ben Cartwright! Pause! Blue Joe! Come down here, will ya? It's Roy Coffee. Get down, boy. Get around there. Come on, boy. Get your hands off of me. Oh, stop, will you? Ben, here he is again. Uh, I didn't even know he was gone. No, he was gone, all right. And did he have himself a night? He walked into the saloon there in town and ordered whiskey just as big as you please. When the bartender told him to go on outside, son, and play with your hoop, Jamie got mad. He picked up a bottle off a table and throwed it at the bartender, missed, and busted that great big looking glass stands back of the bar there in the smithereens. And that ain't all. A customer started laughing, and Jamie took out after him, and a customer jumped backwards and knocked over a poker table with chips and money and glasses on it. It was a high-stake game, too. And, oh, these players, they was really burning. They got up and started swinging, and this whole, oh, it was really a mess. Somebody's going to have to pay a bushel full of money to the saloon. Don't worry, my father will pay for it. He's got more money than you got in your whole dirty little town. Yeah, you just be quiet, young man. I'll attend to you later. Ben, I'm just going to say one thing more. Now, you keep this kid out of my hair. I got a town to take care of, and I ain't got time to keep running out here two, three times a day bringing him home. I'll, I'll tell Charlie I'll, I'll come into town and settle up with those damages. I'll do that. Good night. Now, you listen to me, young man. A couple of things I want to say to you. I don't know why you're getting so excited. You, you told me to have a good time. Now, you listen to me, and you'll listen real well. We're running a ranch here, not a home for wayward boys. 
And we can't afford to spend the next two months tracking you down every time you decide to light out. So you get this through your head. If you give us any more trouble, I will give you a tanning you will never forget. And that is a promise. Now, you get to bed. Now, much. Now, maybe we can all go up to bed and get some sleep. I feel like a hit. Gonna be ready for the stock show? Yeah, I think so. He's coming along real fine. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Well, let's get inside, young fellow. We got some book work to do. Mm, my favorite. Hey, why sit down in the mouth this morning? What, are you still thinking about last night? Oh, let's forget about last night and start fresh. We don't mean for you to be unhappy here. Anything special you'd like to do today? Hey, tell you what. Find me have to go over some Brandon records right now, and Hoss will be in town all day, but I'll be free this afternoon. If you're still interested in learning about calf rope, and I'll teach you then. Thanks, but I don't expect I'll need to teach her for such elementary instruction. Well, you suit yourself. Joe will be ready around noon. In case you change your mind. Sixty-eight, head in section eight. Uh, Mr. Carwright, uh, there's something wrong with that calf of yours outside. Busted. How did this happen? How did this happen? Do you know? Yeah, I did it. How? I was practicing with the rope. I roped him, that's all. Put a splint on his leg. <laughs> What's the big deal? It's only a calf. Don't, don't, let him go. Let him go. Get in the house. Come on, get in the house. Now. Sorry, Jim. Look, I'm sorry about hurting your calf, all right? I didn't mean to. Young man, you also lost us a morning's work on the books. And there's the price of the calf. Oh, you're always harping on money. My father's got plenty of money. He'll pay for it when he gets back. He always does, doesn't he? Not this time. This time, you're going to pay for it. How? By working it out as a hired hand on this ranch. Oh, you won't be able to pay for all of it, but it'll be a start in the right direction. Let's see now, tenderfoot like you, 
I'll get maybe, what, $10 a month and you keep if, uh, if you're lucky. $10? My father gives me more than that every week. Yeah. Maybe that's one of the things that's wrong. You start work right after lunch. Wait a minute, wait a minute. If you, if you think I'm going to swill your pigs and chase your calves all over this stinking ranch, you can think again. My father would never your allow me... Your father gave me permission to do exactly as I saw fit with you. And that uh, brings me to another point. Here. I made you a promise. And I'm going to keep it now. Promise? Here. Oh, no. No. You, you wouldn't. Oh, yes, I would. Ow! 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 Stop! Ow! Where did my father... Hello. <laughs> Stop it. I don't know what he done, but Stop. ain't that the prettiest music you ever heard? Stop. Oh, it sure Ow. is. Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Boys, I want you to meet our new ranch hand. Hi. Allow me. Hmm. Uh, you think you got it? Yes, I think so. All right. Try it one. says all he wants is a little pile about three feet wide and about three feet high before supper. Don't look so disgusted. Ain't gonna hurt you none. Hopsing needs a kindling. All right, all right. Spare me the lecture, please. A word to the wise. I wouldn't leave here till I got that job finished. Paul sure don't hold with doing jobs halfway. Doing the best I can. Well, I'm afraid there won't be any supper until this is piled three by three. But I didn't have any lunch. A and besides, it'll be dark pretty soon. How can I split logs in the dark? Get your lantern. <laughs> You didn't like stew. When a person's starving to death, he'll eat anything. Mm. Just remember how hungry you were tonight, Jamie, because this is the last time you'll be allowed to eat your meal after everybody else is finished. Hopsing can't be expected to serve meals at all hours of the day or night. From now on, if you haven't finished your day's work and time to eat with the rest of us, you wait till the next meal. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Well, it didn't hurt saying sir, did it? Kid's plumb dug it out, huh? Yeah, he sure is. I'll take his boot off. I don't think that's gonna wake him up. No, I don't imagine anything will wake him up. Hey, Jamie. Jamie? Hey, Jamie. Wake up. Breakfast. I must have fallen asleep. Yeah, that'll that'll happen to you after a hard day's work. But better get a leg on it. Breakfast will be ready in a minute. Okay. 
Breakfast? Oh, no. Oh, I can't be morning. Oh. Your sons have just informed me what I have to do today. Now, listen, Ben, I'm telling... Wait a minute, son. Name is Mr. Cartwright. All right, Mr. Cartwright. I will not clean out that stable. You're deliberately giving me the filthiest job on this place just to see how far you can push me. Uh, Jamie, in the first place, it's not a stable. It's a barn. And in the second place, before you're through, you're going to take a crack at every job there is to be done in this ranch. And believe me, some of them will make cleaning a barn seem like uh, smelling a rose. Now, in the third place, you're not telling me what you're going to do. I'm telling you. Well, you're not telling me what to do, and I'm not going to clean up... Jamie, we're not going to have any tantrums here. I want you to listen carefully to what I have to say and think about it. Now, at this moment, you have two choices. Now, either you can sit here, eat your breakfast quietly, and then clean up the barn, or you can go upstairs, be locked in your room, throw the loudest and longest tantrum of your life, and then clean up the barn. In which case, of course, it'll be a long time before your next meal. And if you raise your voice to me just one more time, you'll have no choice. Which is it going to be? Good. Now let's have some breakfast. I'll sing. finish it, are you? I'm not. Why? Why? Well, look at those stalls. They have to be shoveled out, don't they? And the harness has to be hung up, and the, this whole floor has to be swept clean, not just this little part of it. The whole thing has to be done properly. You better get a move on, young fella. You don't want to miss your dinner, do you? Pretty quiet tonight, Jamie. Yes, sir. You know, I thought you'd be jumping for joy and busting out all over because your father's coming back and you're going to be delivered up from this bondage. about your father? Yes, sir. Why? He hates me. Oh, no, Jamie. He doesn't hate you. He doesn't hate you, and you don't hate him. Oh, you do a pretty good job of hurting each other. You know, 
It's no longer a question of why you hurt each other, as who gets hurt the most. And you know, I think it's you. It sure is. He couldn't care less. Oh, you're wrong, Jamie, you're wrong. You're so wrong. He wants things to be different, but it's, it's hard for him. You know, it's easier to go along an old trail than to carve out a new one. But with you, it's different. You're already on a new one. What do you mean? Jamie, have you had a good look at yourself lately? You know, in the last couple of months, you've grown up. You've become a man. It's true. You've learned what it is to, to do a hard job and do it well. You've learned to be respectful of others to want the respect of others. And I think, for the first time, you know what it is to live with people instead of live in a running fight with people. Am I right? Yes, sir. Thanks to you. Oh, oh maybe I started you on the way, but... You hold the reins in your own hands, Nud. If you behave with your father, the way you behave with us, he can't help but respond. Jamie. Your father wants to love you. Let him. Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Jamie, your father's here. Yes, sir. I know. Well, what are you doing in here? Come on. Hey, what's the matter? I'm kind of scared, I guess. What are your father? I can't help it, Joe. I want him to be proud of me, you know? I want it to be different between us. Look, when he left here, you're a lot... Well, you're a lot different than you are now. You've grown up a heck of a lot, you know? I, I thought I had. I've learned a great deal, it's true, but... right now, I feel like jelly inside. I'm scared because, for the first time, I, I really want to be the kind of person he'll approve of. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Then what do I do? I suggest you go out there and shake his hand. I mean... It's as simple as that. He can't be any tougher on you than my pa was. <laughs> Go on out there. You know, Matthew, the best time of the year in San Francisco is in the fall. That's what everyone tells me, Ben. <laughs> but to tell you the truth, I think I'll take the plunder. Also. It's just... Jamie. Good to see you, Father. It's good to see you, son. Well, I'll get these bags inside. Uh, here, I'll, I'll help you with those, Mr. Carwright. Thank you, Jamie. Heavy, easy. Well, you were right, Ben. He has changed. Yes, he has. Now it's up to you. Matthew, I gotta tell you this. You can be real proud of your boy. Sure again. can. Fix fences, pitch hay, and everything. <laughs> yeah, not to mention splitting kindling. He's real, real good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, just wait until you see San Francisco. It's. <laughs> All right, Elizabeth. I'll spring our surprise. I have a reason for asking for this champagne. I've got wonderful news. Elizabeth and I are going to be married. Married? You and Elizabeth? You do this to me? Do what to you, Jamie? 
What I've done is to ask someone we both love to be my wife. But you never said one word to me. Jamie, listen to me. I had no idea. So that's why you left me here. Jamie, believe me. Believe you? Does it make any difference what I believe? Neither of you care. You made that clear enough. Elizabeth, wait. Jamie? I know this is hard for you to understand. No, it's not at all hard. But Jamie, if you just let me explain. Don't bother. I'm quite used to treatment like this. I suppose I've even come to expect it. I don't know what I'd do if anyone ever treated me fairly. Jamie, we don't ever mean to be unfair. It's just that... Just what, Elizabeth? An accident? You mean you and he weren't planning this all the time behind my back? You're just like he is. You never wanted to be my friend. You just wanted to be his wife. Jamie, that's not true. What can I do to prove to you it's not so? Don't marry him. Is that really what you want? Yes, that's what I want. Matthew, I tried to talk to him. I tried to explain, but... I can imagine the reception you got. Maybe if we gave him a little more time, if we postponed the wedding. Postpone the wedding? Wait a minute. I know the way Jamie feels. I think you do, too. This is, comes a shock to him. Huh? But you're entitled to your happiness, both of you. And Jamie's no longer a little boy. He's a, he's a young man now. Let me talk to him. I think he'll understand. I want to talk to you, Jamie. I've got nothing to say to you. Fine. That'll make it a lot easier for you to listen. Jamie, for a while there, for just a little while, I thought to myself, that boy is really coming along. He's getting to be a man. But I guess it's easy to pretend you're a man until that first test comes along. And I failed. So I'm a child, is that it? Yeah. Yes, that's it. You failed. You failed yourself. You failed your father. You failed that young woman who needs your acceptance just as much as you need hers. You failed. I wanted to prove myself. I tried. Did you? You caved in the very first time your father tried to meet you halfway, man to man. Oh, yes, Jamie, that's what he was trying to do, meet you halfway, treat you as an equal. Isn't that what you always wanted from him? Love, respect, understanding? Well, he needs understanding, too. Everybody does, but he needs his now. So what are you going to do? Fold up? Cry? I did wrong, didn't I, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, you did wrong. That takes courage, too, to say that you did wrong. Jamie, why don't you say it to them? They're the ones who should hear it. of feeling sorry for myself. Uh, 
I'm sorry, Father. Let's not let that good champagne go to waste, huh? Absolutely not. Get the glasses. Thank you so much, Ben. Ah, oh, for you're everything. More than you're more than welcome. Well, that pays for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Ben, I can never thank you enough. Well, Matthew, just uh, keep that boy of yours in line. Make sure we don't have to do it all over again. <laughs> Come on, Jamie. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright? Oh, uh, Jamie. The name is Ben. You're a man now. Ben, I'll miss you. I'll never forget you. Darn right you won't. <laughs> You're going to be living in San Francisco, and we'll see a lot of each other. And listen, any time you feel that that roping technique of yours is getting a little rusty, you come here and sharpen up, you hear? Right. Up you go. Hey, Jamie. It's uh, kind of a bumpy ride to Virginia City. I thought you might need this. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for everything, Joe. Good luck. <laughs> so long. All set, Hoss. Here we go. Heat up. So long. So long. <laughs> Doggone it, you're still the best looking gal I ever saw. You ain't as young as you used to be. And uh, a set of legs like them, they ain't nobody gonna pay no attention to that age. Little big moony eyes and that little. Turn up my little shiny black hair and a big black bushy tail. Don't go let you quit worrying so much anyhow. Old Jim ain't gonna let him take you away from here. I got work to do. I can't stand here complimenting you all day. Expect you back this soon. How'd the trial turn out? I didn't wait to find out. You didn't? Jim, you mean you just got up and walked out? Yeah. Too close and stuffy in that courtroom for me. You feel the same way, don't you, old gal? Hmm? There. Go and visit your friend. Come on. Oh, Jim, that, that judge could rule against you. Regardless of how he rules, Whipple is not going to get that mare. And that's all that counts. Look at her, will you? She's got a secret we don't know. <laughs> She's sure in fine shape. Why don't you give me a fine coat? She's done that quite a few times. Sure I have. She's going to be an old lady, though. This is the last coat she's going to have. It's going to be the most special coat in the world. You know that niece of mine I told you about over in Grass Valley? Well, I ain't never met her, of course. I feel like I know her, the way you've talked about her the last 15 years. I guess I do talk about her quite a bit. 
Well, she has a little boy, three years old. A boy of that age ought to have a cold of his own. I'm gonna take the mare over to Grass Valley. I wanna be with her when the cold is born. Brings you up this way, Pete. You doing a little electioneering? I'm always doing that, especially in enemy territory. This time I'm here on official business. Should have stayed around, Acton. The judge handed down his decision five minutes after you walked out on him. Pete, how'd it turn out? Here, read it. You'll read it, Hoss. The judge awarded the mayor to Mr. Wilson. You both had your say. Now, the mayor belongs to Whipple, and that's that. You all know the mayor belongs to me. I made a deal to buy a bunch of wild horses from you, and the mayor is part of the herd. That mayor was never part of the herd. And you know it. Oh, wait, come on, Jim. Hold it, hold it. Come on, Jim. That's not what the judge said. Jim, come here a minute. You're hard to hit it. I got a plan. Just calm down a minute. I ain't got no money on me, and I, I know Jim ain't. But maybe we could go get Paul and buy the mare back, huh? Well, I'd say that's up to Whipple. She's not for sale. I'm keeping her for myself. Whipple, you touch that bear, I'll kill you. How about it, Sheriff? The law say I got a right to collect what's mine? That's what the law says. Give me a rope. It's all yours. It's all I ask. Ah! Jim, wait a minute. Calm down, Matt. Burn it, Jim. Ah! It's the right way and the wrong way to do everything, and you're trying to do it the wrong way. And I guarantee you we'll get this all settled. Good advice, Jim. I'm warning you. Let it be. Well, that's that. Well, now that I'm up here, I might as well see your dad. Do a little campaigning. I think it'll do much good, Pete. He's gonna support old Roy. Well, that's exactly why I want to talk to him. No sense wasting my time and all those good folks I already know are gonna support me. <laughs> want to ride along? No, no, thank you, Pete. You'll find Paul at Spencer Canyon. You know how to get there. Yeah. Stick around here, little Jim. All right, suit yourself. Yeah. I'm not going to give her up. Now, look, Jim, don't you start nothing, you hear? You let me handle this. I'll talk to Paul, and we'll get her back. When? That mare's been with me for 18 years. She's not just another piece of horse flesh for a whipple to trade off. Look, Jim, you go on back to the house and stay there. I'll go find Paul, and we'll figure out something. I got to get her back. You understand? 
Yes, Dad Burnett, I understand. I don't need the gun, Mr. Whipple. I'm not looking for trouble. Just want to talk to you. Don't start anything, Acton. You already lost one lawsuit. You lay a hand on me, I'll swear on a warrant. Be reasonable, Mr. Whipple. To you, a horse is just a horse. Well, that's your business. With me, it's different. It's over and done with. I know you got a good market for those uh, wild horses I round up. I'll ask Ben Cartwright to give me some time off. I'll get you 50 head. That's five times as much as the mare's worth to you. Is it a deal, Mr. Whipple? I said it's over and done with. Come on. Don't pull on her that way. Let go of that rope, Acton. She's not used to being treated that way. Well, she better well get used to it. <laughs> Better be nice to you. Ah, you go get yourself that warrant. But like I told you before, you're not taking this mare. Girl, let's go home. I'm going away so soon, old girl. But I just can't understand a judge handing down a decision like that. Jim always used that mare for rounding up his wild horses. Everybody knew that. Well, why did Jim have to beat up on Whipple in the first place? And then on top of that, get up and walk out of the courtroom? Because he thought he could get away with it. Well, there's no point in talking about it. As soon as Sam Whipple gets over being mad, I'll offer him such a good price for that mare, he'll sell it back. He better. The way Jim carried on, you think that was the only mare in the country? Well, he always was kind of a strange one anyway. Boys, take them horses, put them in the breaking corral. Start right. Thought much about the election? Well, uh, yes, yes, people are in fact they have. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You know, a lot of people are backing me, Mr. Cartwright. Influential people in town, men that you know and respect. Well, I appreciate that, uh, Pete, but uh, I think Roy Coffey's made a, made a fine sheriff for us. Oh, well, sure, but times change, and Roy's getting a little bit too old to change with him, huh? What I plan to do is reorganize. Hasn't anybody told that brother of yours that there's other ways of riding a horse except at a dead run? Thought 
Yeah, Sam Whipple. I found him dead alongside the road near Big Fork. He'd been shot. Did he have Jim Acton's mare with him? No, just his own saddle horse. Joe, riding to town. Tell Sheriff Carpenter to meet us at Big Fork. Right. I can handle this myself, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah, I'm sure you can, but Roy is still our sheriff. felt about that mare, and knowing how idiot he was, I should never have left him here alone. I still say Jim's no killer. Whipple must have pulled a gun on him or something. He had to have a good reason. I mean, Jim should have, should have known that I could have brought that mare back for him. Seems to me you're wasting an awful lot of time. It seems to me you're awfully anxious, Pete. I'm not in the habit of feeling sorry for killers. Pete's right. No sense of giving him any more of a head start, and he's already got. I can handle it alone if you want me to, Sheriff. I can bring him in. How? Draped over a saddle? Like you brought in the last three? I did my job, didn't I? Roy? Boys and I know this part of the country pretty well. You want us to ride with you? Just fixing to ask you, Ben. Never thought I'd see the day I'd be out chasing a friend with a rifle. You don't want him to get away with it, do you? See him get shot, neither of you. That's a question you didn't have to ask. on you as I can. She hadn't done that, Ben. When you chase a man that's just running, that's one thing. But when you chase a man that's turning around and bushwhacked you... Oh, Roy, come on, don't be silly. You don't want to hit something, either hit it. Jim Acton's the best rifle shot I know. Close to home as I ever got. Hey, 
Yeah, Pete? Flank him on the right side. All right, Pete. They'll never find old Jim up there, Joe. Yeah, well, maybe that climb will cool Pete off a little bit. Yeah, like this. Remember the time we thought we had that old stallion trapped up there and old Jim rode up? Yeah, I remember he started laughing at us. He said that old stallion and let us think we had him trapped, and while we were breaking our necks climbing up there, he'd sneak out the back way. Yeah. Hey, Joe, you thinking what I am? You bet I am. Where in the devil they think they're going? trick in the world, Joe. Now, I'm sorry I ever taught it to you. How are you, little Joe? That's the second oldest trick. We'll shake hands later. You too, our huh, horse? I should have known. You got to thinking about that stallion we thought we had trapped up there that time? That's right, Jim. You boys have long memories. You gave us a lot to remember, Jim. Yeah. We had good times together. Then we're gonna have a lot more as soon as we get this mess cleaned up. Look, Jim, Paul and us know as well as we're alive that you didn't just shoot Whipple down for no cause. What happened back there? A man shoots at you. You shoot back. You have no time to think. We can understand that, but now you've had time to think. That's right, Jim. Think about that niece. You told us how much she thinks of you. How's she gonna feel having a fugitive for an uncle? I thought about it. Then you come on back with us now. I've been thinking about that stallion we, we tried to trap up there. I know how you are, horse. I know that heart of yours. And you're still little Joe. You don't show it, but uh, you're just the same. That stallion, even if we had caught him, neither one of you would have put a rope around him. You knew he had to be free. That bird, Jim, we, we can't let you go. Try to make it easy on everybody. Did he take his rifle? Plan on letting him escape? Well, you can step aside now. I'm taking him. Are you real sure you can handle it, Pete? Yeah, I'm real sure. I'm no particular friend of his. Tired. Can we rest here a little while, please? All right, I guess all the horses can use some rest. Boy, yeah. I talk with him? He sure can, Ben, but I don't think it's going to do you no good. He's a drifter. He's born to it. And that kind of man just don't change. Friend. 
Look at him, Frank. Treating that killer like he was something special. Hmm, maybe that's because they've been friends for a long time. I sure don't like the way Roy's listening to those Cartwrights. For all we know, they could be planning on letting him escape. Oh, Pete, I find that kind of hard to believe. Well, then don't believe it. But I know my obligation to the law, and I know I don't want to get myself killed the way Whipple did. Now, you can follow my lead or string along with Roy. It doesn't much matter which. From now on, you better watch your back. Well, the way you tell it, Jim, Sam Whipple, uh, that was self-defense. That's the way it was, man. But he's going to believe it. I do, for one. Thanks. But you won't be on the jury. What chances a drifter like me got? Same chances any other man would have. I'm trying to give you some good advice, Jim. Will you take it? Depends what you expect me to do. Well, number one, I expect you to stop trying to stand up against the world alone. Number two, I expect you to go back there and face the music. And let them lock me up. Look at that. Beautiful sight, isn't it? Yeah. It's real beautiful. I've told you more than once, you can have a piece of it if you want to settle down. Never could, Ben. I get an itching, and I gotta move. Even country like that, you hold your fingers up like you're looking through bars, and you can spoil it. You won't listen, will you, Jim? You're going to run again. I have to. I'm afraid the only end to it will be a, a bullet. What's the idea? Just removing the temptation. You think that was necessary, huh? I think so. You looked at the sun lately? Yeah, I've seen it. Well, if we hang around here much longer, we won't be back before dark. You like herding prisoners after dark? No, I don't. That's why we're staying overnight at the Ponderosa. You're sort of treating him like a guest, aren't you? A guest of the Nevada Territory. And you aren't even going to tie him up. Now, there's six of us and one of him. That's pretty fair odds, isn't it? <laughs> well, uh, now that you mention it, I guess it is. something. Last trouble you're gonna cause me. You put that gun down! Broken leg, Ben. My 
have never hurt a horse in my life. You did it, Jim! Oi! And can you trust me with a gun? There's an unwritten law around here. A man takes care of his own horse. Mister, I don't go by unwritten laws. That's one thing a man never gets used to, Ben. Jim, just ask me one question. What makes you so dead burn hard headed stubborn? Something I gotta do, horse. Well, fine, but you keep pulling stunts like the one you just pulled, and it's gonna make your case even rougher for you. Besides, whatever you got to do can't be so important, it won't wait. Not so, horse. You know that niece of mine I've been telling you about? She's not my niece at all. She's my daughter. And her little boy is my grandson. Well, I'll be doggone. That's why after my wife died, I... I thought it would be better if I left my daughter with my brother and his wife. They've done a good job raising her. Much better than I would have done. She thinks I'm her uncle. Better this way. She knows I break horses. Work on a ranch, drift. Sweet girl. I used to hold her on my knee and tell her all kinds of stories. Oh, Jim, you. You got a lot of good living to catch up on as soon as you get out. I'm already out. I'm going to stay that way. Boss, a man's got a right to give his grandson a present, hasn't he? I'm going to give him a coat. I'm going to take the mare across the mountains. Nobody can do it for me. This is something I gotta do for myself. You understand, horse? Yes. And that's just the trouble. And knowing you the way I do, I understand you. I knew you would. All right, Jim, it's time to go. You can take the saddle off that dead horse and put her on your mare and ride her back. Come on! I think I'll tie his hands. We got a lot of rough country between here and the ranch. How's he gonna ride with his hands tied? Just don't trust him, that's all. Oh, come on, Pete. That Mary he's owns 18 years old. He's gonna outrun somebody? Well, all right. If anything happens, you Cartwrights are responsible. Remember that. Let him escape. You deliberately let him escape, and you said that mare couldn't run. Well, I didn't think she could. You didn't think. Ben, I've gone along with you as far as I could, but deliberately let him escape. Now, Roy, this is not deliberate. Now, don't yell at me. You've been more of a hindrance than you have a help ever since we started. Well, would you look who's talking? It was your idea to bring these Cartwrights along, not mine. Well, they've had you in their pocket ever since the day you were elected. Well, I'll have a lot to tell when I get back to town, and Frank here will back me up. Make up your mind to it, old man. You're through. 
Maybe your, uh, your friends, the Cartwrights, will give you a little piece of ground to build a cabin on. Now, I'm taking over. Then I'm... I'm sorry I lost my temper. Roy, well, if you let Pete take over, man's life will be at stake. He's not taking over. Did you see that beautiful old gal clear that fence? Yes. I saw her. Try to lose us in them rocks. If he gets over the top of that hill and into the woods on the other side, we'll never get him. I'm gonna take Frank and cut him off. We're waiting for him when he comes over the top. Yeah, there's a trail goes around the other side. Go ahead, Pete. Nobody's going to blame you for getting old, girl. But ten years ago, you would have carried me over the top of that hill like you had wings. Angel wings. It appears like the mare gave out on him. No, she didn't give out. He just doesn't want to cripple her in the rocks. Hey, Pa? Huh? I've been thinking what you, what you said about the trail. There was a big landslide up there last winter. There ain't no way for Pete to get around that way. I know. in on them now. Doggone it, Joe. Where does right end and wrong begin? All he ever wanted to be was free. Look at him now. Breaking his lungs and his heart. Like that, that wild stallion I chased. Run him plumb into the ground. When I finally caught him, I couldn't more put a rope around his neck and I could rise and fly. Come on. I want you to understand. It's me they're after. But I don't want you to get hurt. You go back with a the herd. They'll take care of you. And uh, you give me a fine colt, you understand? I'll come back to see you in the spring.
horses will never make it through there. Yeah. Those Cartwrights, they knew that slide was there. Come on. She's going to try to climb it with him. Oh, that mare will kill herself. The mare won't make it, but Jim will. And I can't let that happen. Wait, wait, Roy. Let me try something. Jim! Jim! Look behind you! Your mare! <laughs> Go back, Carol. Go back. Go back. Go back, Carol. You can't climb up there. You'll hurt yourself. Go on back. Go on. Son. Yeah. You know that niece he's always talking about? Yeah? It's his own daughter. Go on back, girl. Go on. Please go back, will you? You don't want to go back, do you? Well, I can understand that. You've been with me all your life. All right. I go to you then. All right. I guess you're more important than I am. You always did know how to get the best of me, didn't you? <laughs> All right, come on. He was right out where he could have got a shot at you. He didn't even have a gun. Just a mistake. I've always been a good deputy, Roy. Hoss, listen to me, Hoss. We've always got along together. Oh, but... Pete. Little Joe, look. Joe...
mighty pretty old gal. <laughs> Got a lot of life left in you, too. Yeah. You have a nice, pretty coat from Jim here. I hate to leave you pinned up in here, Dad burn it, but if I let you go, you'll run back out there in them wild ones. I gotta know where you are. Paul, Joe. Hoss. <sighs> Turn her loose, Hoss. Let her loose? <laughs> Oh, I never would catch her. I gotta take her up to Grass Valley tomorrow. Well, I, uh, I got a letter from Jim's daughter. A letter? I'd like to read you part of it. It says here, uh, my uncle was always a free man, Mr. Cartwright. And I want to remember him that way. I know how much he loved that mayor. And how he always thought of her as something as free as himself. I was never able to do much for him when he was alive. I want to do something for him now. I want you to turn his mare loose. Yeah. Yeah, doggone it, yeah. Come on out there, Gallo. Next spring, when that herd comes back to the high country, that mayor's gonna have a little black coat to show off. <laughs> yeah. And I'll bet you I know a little grandson that's gonna make mighty happy, too. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's go home. Yeah. yeah. Still out, looks like. Yeah, over three hours now. Well, it's taking them so dang long. Seems like to me it's a cut and dried case. That Irishman just up and shot poor old Fred Demmer, then robbed him. Don't seem to me they got much to deliberate on. Man's life at stake, Mr. Porter. Don't reckon you make that decision without some pretty serious considerations. Boss? I'll lay odds it's that brother of yours that's holding up the verdict. I don't hold with putting young fellas like Joe on a murder jury. You need men who think alike. Men who'll take an eye for an eye. You know what I mean? Mr. Porter. Oh, Miss Demmer. Uh, just telling the horse I Carter. heard. Do you mind if I trouble you for a cup of water? That courtroom is, is, is like an oven. Of course, Mrs. Demmer. Come on over to the store with me. Town appreciates how you must be feeling. But with the trial, not letting you forget your sorrows for one minute. I was just thinking about little Joe in there. And remembering the first time I sat on a jury in a murder trial. Oh, what a responsibility. Deciding whether a man is gonna live or die. 
It's like you're burdened with the power of God. All right, now hold it, hold it. Look, if we're all going to talk at once, we're not going to get anything decided. Now, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. We already decided. Three hours ago, everybody here was set to vote Terrence O'Toole guilty. Everybody excepting you. All right, and I'll be ready, too, as soon as we go over the evidence again. We've already done that. Oh, sure, we have piecemeal. Well, that's as good a way as any. We talked it all out. Anybody that's made up their mind ain't going to change it by going over the whole thing again. Maybe not, but there's a man sitting over in that jail cell waiting for us to decide whether he hangs or goes free. Now, if I was that man, I'd like to know that this jury was taking its time deciding. Now, we've already taken a lot of time. When I leave this room, whatever the verdict is, I want to be able to live with it. That's all right. well, let's go over it one more time. Give me another drink. Ain't you had enough? You ought to be over to the courthouse with your mother. She needs someone to stand. Stepmother. Nevertheless, she needs someone to stand by her at a time like this. You know more of me than a housekeeper. Hey, well, who asked you to poke your big nose in my business? Can I get another drink or not? Hi, Sam. Beer. He's been drinking like that ever since the jury started deliberating. Yeah. Well, it's sort of a hard time for old Jeff. Losing his paw like that, and his trial dragging on. It's taking that jury so dang long, anyway. I swore in a Bible I saw two will kill my paw, and they just string him up. Jury's in! All right, O'Toole, the court's ready for you. The hour of judgment is at hand, is it? That's right. I welcome it, then. Got a verdict? Oh, we got one, Your Honor. Well, what is it? What is it? We say guilty. You got anything to say before the sentencing? Well, perhaps a few words that do no harm. I'll not take long. Well, get on with it. Tis uh, many a land I visited since leaving the old country, Your Honor. Half of them are the devil's own, let me tell you. With no democratic processes of laws you have here. I commend you, sir, and the prosecutor, and the jury as well. It is a fair trial I've had. I'm that grateful you'll be hearing no word from me against it. But though these good people have deliberated fairly and have rendered their verdict, by the Almighty, they've made an error. Terence O'Toole has been falsely accused wrongly condemned. I stand innocent of these charges.
I've said my piece, Your Honor. I thank you kindly for the privilege. The jury has found you guilty of robbing Fred Dimmer of $400 and shooting him down in cold blood. I sentence you to hang by your neck until dead. Sheriff, you have a job to deliver this man to the U.S. Marshal at Carson City tomorrow. The hanging will take place there. All right, Your Honor. All right, O'Toole. That's all. Justice was done. Yes, I'm thinking it was. Joe, you sure missed some good apple pie tonight. Old Pop Sing almost outdid himself. Yeah, I bet. Paul wants us to do some work on that barn roof tomorrow. You want to haul the shingles out tonight? I can wait till tomorrow, can't I? Yeah, reckon so. You're still bothered by that verdict, ain't you? What if I am? Just ask it. I think you ought to talk to little Joe. What's the matter? Well, he's worked himself up a real fret. Yeah, I noticed it at supper. The trial release got him worried, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he's taken a mighty big load on his shoulders. Well, I'll talk to him. See if you can make sense out of these figures, will you? Yes, sir. Some more coffee? Oh, a little while. Ah, oh, that trial sure upset everybody scheduled in it. That's all folks talked about. Well, I guess the town will get back to normal now that it's over. Yeah, sure. Everybody will be happy now. Tool will hang and justice will be served. You don't seem to think so, do you? Oh, I should think so. I went over the evidence twice. I made it... I made all the jurors do the same thing. I wanted... I wanted to be sure. You brought in a verdict, Joe. Yeah, we brought in a verdict. The evidence was there. Tool saw Dimmer take the money out of the bank, the $400. He saw it. Dimmer's wife stay in town to shop. Figured he'd be out of the ranch alone. He followed him out there, but he wasn't alone. Jeb was there, saw the shooting. A little while later, the sheriff catches O'Toole, and he's got about $400 on him. It all fits. Did you believe O'Toole's story about earning that money for passage back to Ireland? No. 
Oh, I don't believe that. The, the only question was, what happened to the billfold? And the first thing you gotta figure is O'Toole threw it away. What's troubling you, Joe? I don't know. Not the evidence. It's just the way O'Toole looked at me. We brought in the verdict. Well, he stood up there and looked every single one of us right in the eye. Said we made a mistake. I just can't believe that a man could look at you that way and still be guilty. Joe, you made a decision. And I doubt that there's a man alive who's never had a second thought about any decision he's made. But you were asked to do a job for serving a jury. And you accepted that responsibility. And you did your job conscientiously, intelligently. And that's all the law asks for. You did your job well. Breakfast is on the table. Morning, Bob. Morning, Joe. Listen, I wanted to ask you if uh, maybe I could go to work on that roof this afternoon sometime. Why, do you have something more important to do? Well, there's something I have to do, yeah. What? Well, it's, it's just some person I want to take care of in town. Well, look, Paul, I can start that roofing by myself when Joe gets back. Uh, would you? Yeah. Good, okay, I'll be back. Well, wait a minute, have something to eat before you go. Uh, no, thanks, Paul, I'm not hungry this morning. Well, you'll be back for an early lunch, you hear? Right, I will. I'll be back by noon, I promise you. Joe. Hi, Roy. I want to ask a favor of you. Well, I hope it's something that I can do for you now. I'm leaving for Carson City with Mr. O'Toole for long. Well, I wonder if I could go in and talk to O'Toole for a minute. You go right ahead, but don't take too long. Better leave your gun right here, too. Right. My name is Cartwright. I was on the jury. Yes, I know. All of your faces are mounted like portraits on the walls of my soul. That little act you put on in court yesterday came kind of late, didn't it? Would it have uh, made a difference to you before the deliberations? Well, all the evidence was against you. It just couldn't understand why you bothered denying it. Would you have had me admit to murder then? Well, why not? It's not going to make any difference now. So you've uh, come to your confession, have you? Just the condemned man's immortal spirit that concerns you. You've uh, come to offer God's grace, perhaps, to help purge my soul of sin before the eternal sleep? No, that's not why I came. I... Then I misunderstood you, sir. All the while I was supposing it was for an admission of my guilt you came. Here I was supposing that you sought assurance you'd sent the proper man to the gallows. But you see, Mr. Cartwright, I stole no man's cash, and I'm innocent of murder. So I'll not be administering that balm to your conscience, badly in need of it as you'll continue to be.
Thanks, Will. Joe, you say hello to your pa for me, will you? Hi, Sam. Joe. Let me have a beer, huh? Sure, Joe. Thanks, Sam. The fellows are playing for pretty high stakes, aren't they? Yeah. They ain't small-time gamblers, Joe. What Jeb Dimmer's doing in a game like that? I don't know. But he's been at it since yesterday after the trial on and off. How's he doing? Heavy loser. But he keeps coming back with more money. How about a drink? Nah, I could use one. Give me a beer, will you? Gave you a pretty bad time over there, huh? Nah, I want it back. Well, here's that verdict you turned in. And a good hanging. Pretty anxious for that hanging, aren't you? <laughs> well, you were on the jury. That, that was the verdict, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. How much money do you say you lost over there? Why, are you backing somebody? No, I just didn't figure you for that kind of stakes, that's all. Well, maybe you better explain what you meant by that. I'm not going to explain anything to you. Tool. Is it your plan to leave soon, Sheriff? Well, we got to be over in Carson City early this afternoon. Marshal will be waiting then? Yeah, the Marshal and the, uh, the other official. Yeah, I was meaning him, too. You better eat up. It's a three-hour ride over there. It is not the pangs of hunger I was concerning myself with, Sheriff. Will you suit yourself? We'll be through this job in about an hour, Paul. Oh, I wasn't worried about that. Little Joe said he'd be back by noon. You ain't worried about him, are you? No, I'm not worried about anything happening to him. It's just that I wonder why he went into town. He wouldn't say. <laughs> well, I just got to remind myself over and over again that I've got grown sons, and they have grown up problems which they have to solve by themselves. That's right. <laughs> Like that roof. Yeah, well, I'll get on that right now. Now, come on, everybody, let's go to the house, get something cold to drink. Hmm? Good idea. Come on, Jake. Mrs. Dimmer. Good 
This is never I'm Joe Cartwright. I sat in on the murder jury. Yes, I know that, surely. Well, I'm sorry to come out here and bother you like this, but... Well, I just wondered if there was anything else you could tell us. Anything that didn't come out at the trial. With my not knowing anything that kept me from testifying. Yeah, I know. There's nothing else you can add. What would I be knowing? Shopping like I was in town when Fred was killed. Well, there's a man about to be hanged for murder. I just wanted to be sure he was the right one. Sure, anybody can look in his face and see he's the right one. And weren't you given better reason at the trial? Weren't you yourself one of them that said Terence was guilty? Terence? It was Terence O'Toole I was meaning to say. There's many a chore here to be done before, Doc. I'll thank you to be leaving me about my work. Mrs. Dimmer, you know Jeb has been gambling pretty heavy in town the last few days. I'll not be a party to your prying. Leave the matter be as it stands, why don't you? What did he want? It wasn't much he asked, and I had little enough to tell. Well, I don't want that cart right around anymore, you hear? Do you suppose he came on my invitation? Well, you just make it plain to him the next time he comes snooping around and he ain't welcome. I'm thinking it's for you to tell him that. You do like I say, if you want to go on keeping house around here. Are you thinking the ranch will tend to itself while you're off in town gambling? Is that what Cartwright came to tell you? And how is it you have the means to gamble? I'm remembering you hadn't the money, and there wasn't a cent of ready cash in the bank. Fred took it all out to make payment on those cattle he fancied. It ain't none of your affair where I get my money. It could set people to wondering. What people? It could set people to wondering how a young man with his pockets empty suddenly acquired sufficient to gamble after his pa was laid in the grave. Caught right? Is that who's wondering? It could set people to thinking that maybe everything that should have come out in the trial didn't. Well, now, I know something that didn't come out in the trial, Molly. Something else that might start people to thinking. You see, I saw you with O'Toole the day before my pa was shot. He was an acquaintance of mine from Dublin, many years before, recognizing me in town. And that's all there was to that. Well, I seen you, Molly. Seen you right out, right out here in the pasture. Talking. Talking like lovers. Like maybe all you could want is to get shed of your husband. Seeing me in town, he rode out to pay his respects. But I barely recollected him. And that's all there was to it. Think anybody's gonna believe that? Little good it'll do them not to. See, I could I could do things with that information, Molly. Then in heaven's name, do it and the devil take you. I could talk up to the sheriff. I could tell him what I seen. What is it you're insinuating? That it was me plotted Fred's death with Terence? No, I didn't insinuate that, Molly. You just kind of set the thought in my head. <sighs> Looks like maybe you better quit making such a big to-do over where I get my money. 
Then maybe I'll forget I saw you and your friend. All right, O'Toole, it's time to go. O'Toole, I said we're leaving. Well, the almighty sheriff, I didn't hear you. I was that far lost in the fancies of the facts. <laughs> Sorry, sheriff. I didn't mean anything of a personal nature. Hey, Sam, the Sheriff and O'Toole leave for Carson City already? O'Toole broke out. Sheriff's got a posse out to hunt him down. O'Toole's not going to get very far. Wouldn't surprise me if one of them posse boys didn't save the Sheriff a long ride back to Carson City. Ain't much fun hunting a man down this kind of heat. Yeah, and they're hunting down the wrong man. Huh?
Are you alone? By the almighty Molly girl, are you alone? No place else in the world to come save this one, Molly. It's me they're out hunting like the hounds after a fox. I'd not come troubling you, you understand, but I'm hurt too bad to go on. Can you help me? Don't you hear me, girl? I have need of you. I had need of you once, too. It was just 21 years ago next month that I waited at the church for a Dublin lad who failed to come. It was a base deed I committed that day. But it was for you I'd done it. For your sake alone, I didn't come. For me, was it? You'd have made a poor match for yourself, Molly. You were last one in a house and, and little ones. And me with the wanderlust deep in my bones. I was that believing I waited all night in my white gown and veil. The pity of my friends. Oh, I had a need of you. Did you not hear my heart crying out to you? My own heart answered it, Molly. Many's the night I'd be sitting in some divilcurse waterfront saloon, weeping bitter tears at the memory of her I gave up. And many's the night I've wished you dead. Sure, you had reason to wish me in my grave. But now, knowing why your groom never came and the torment he suffered for it, perhaps now your pity wouldn't be amiss. You have a queer way of reasoning it out, don't you? I couldn't go off to die without telling you why I deserted you long ago. Tell the truth, Molly. Doesn't your heart soften a bit to me now? Seeing all this pain and suffering I'm in? Oh, I never had a hate in me for any man. Leastways, not for you, Terence. It was the hurt of you going off. It was the pain of losing you that set the stone in my heart. Almighty bless you, Molly. I, I know that. Will you help me now? Will you be tending my wound, Molly girl, so I can make good my escape before those baying dogs get the little fox in their teeth? Jeb says I'm not to be receiving you anymore. Mrs. Dimmer, did this billfold belong to your husband? Yes, it was Fred Shirley. See, his initials on it. But how is it you've come by it? Jeb had it. Sure then, Jeb lied. It wasn't Terence who killed Fred. Mind if I talk to him? It's the billfold he found. It's the proof you'll be needing you're an innocent man. Where did you get that? Jeb had it. Saw him throw it in the brush about a mile away from here. You can forget that trip to Carson City. There's not going to be a hanging. They'll be reopening the case now. It's just a matter of time before you'll be a free man. I'd not count on that, Molly. What are you saying? I'd not be trusting the mood of a posse. Hanging a man first and asking the questions after. No, I'll have no more of posses and juries. Better to be riding back to the East and book passage for Ireland. O'Toole, that doesn't make sense. You try to get away from here, they'll have every lawman in the West on your tail. All right, I'll go with you. 
Would you give me a moment to say goodbye to Molly first? Sure. I'll be right outside. When I get back to Ireland, I'll be sending for you. Will you? We'll be a lass and a lad in love again. And the years falling away. We'll be wedding in the same church, be inviting the same friends. Sure, it'll be like I dreamed it a thousand nights since, and time not a minute older. I'm wishing it could be that way again. But who can say nay to the years? The young, fair Irish maiden is long gone, you see. I'm thinking it's of someone else you've dreamed, not the widow Dimmer. And woe to those years, and to them that still dream. Better not to have crossed the American continent. Better never to have chanced upon Molly McGregor on the streets of Virginia City. Better not to have known what that man had done to you. A man that set you down in the wilderness to struggle with barren soil, to carry the slop of pigs. An evil man who took away your youth and wore down your beauty till what remained was, was flayed and lacerated. I couldn't let a man like that go on living without paying for his sins. Was you after all, not Jeb. I. It was me. Oh, Molly. You were the star of beauty. All my life, I carried the image of you in my mind and heart. And when we met that day in Virginia City, my heart stopped. It was all there in your face and your eyes what he'd done to you. That brutal beast of a man destroying the beauty of your shining eyes. And then to see him strike you there in the street. Blast his eyes. He deserved more than death. You were always in my heart, Terence. Always. It didn't matter what he did. Even when the work was brutal hard, and the days longer than I could bear, and when he wouldn't buy food or a piece of cloth for a new dress. Always, through it all, somewhere inside of me, my heart sang, you're young, fair Molly, and someday your lover will be coming back, and his heart will be singing too. Bless you, Molly. And all eternity, I'll not forget you. Posse's coming. Better let me have that gun. I won't be going with you. I'm afraid you're mistaken. I didn't steal, but I did kill him. We can still get away. I'll be pretending I'm your hostage. You wouldn't stand a chance out there. You'll be a fugitive for the rest of your life. Alone, I would. Boo. Molly. I never stopped loving you. Foreign, ma'am. He, he must have known we'd shoot back. It was to spare me the lot of a fugitive's woman that he done it. 
He was thinking it was that or his life. It was me. It was his last thought. You see, he always loved me. Always. But you did see O'Toole shoot your paw and then run off. Now, that part is the truth, ain't it? Well, when I come up to him and saw he was dead, I... All I could think of is that he's gonna leave that ranch to Molly. Because he never gave me nothing while he was alive. So I figured I'd at least ought to have the money. So I just took the billfold with the $400 in it and... figured they'd blame it on O'Toole. But it was me, and I stole it. I took it. It's hard to believe that I could have been so wrong about him. I guess I better learn to take everything with a grain of salt from now on. Mm. Well, Joe, I'll tell you. I think it's much better to keep on looking for the good in a man. Finding yourself wrong than to be looking for the evil in a man and finding yourself cynical. Hell, I did a lot of good looking for the good in this man. Well, it's another way of looking at it. Suppose you'd been right. You'd have saved a man from hanging. Don't let it sour you the first time you believe in a person and find that you're wrong. Next time, you may be right. Come on. Yeah, where are we going? Well, I'm not going anywhere. You're going out to help Hoss finish fixing the roof. <laughs> OK. Oh, Joe, before you go, there's something I want you to know. I'm proud of you. <laughs> 